This is Rowena Dooley asking Seoul citizens to report for duty. And greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome back to Soul Voices. I'm Griffin Gaming RPG, and it is so good to be back today. I'm glad to uh, be back for our final Soul Voices for 2023, and I really appreciate the fact that you guys are here with me. Big shout outs to folks in the room. I've got uh, Fast Card here, Bladestone. Merry Christmas to you, good buddy. Uh, Pops and Space is here. Uh, we got a few people here. Is that Black Sky Legion? Wow, is it Folk Jollies here? Wow, you guys are here early. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. DK, DK is here. Hey, buddy, how are you? Um, glad that you guys are here. Really appreciate you guys being here. Togi, Togi, the man is here. All right. Boy, we've got all the holiday folks here on a Saturday, two days before Christmas holiday. Uh, for those of you who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas to you and happy holidays to everybody. Hopefully... Everybody will get a chance to take a little break and get a little rest in um, over this season that's going on here um, throughout the world, in fact. Um, today, because this is our last show uh, for 2023, I don't think we've been here in a couple of weeks, right? Because <clears throat> I had a couple of things going on. Um, we want to kind of do a year in review kind of thing, but I, at least that's what I thought we were going to do because last year we did our um, holiday wishes with the Soul Citizens. But this week I want to um, yeah link no links fast cart you you can relax today. <laughs> you have nothing that you have to worry about posting. Um, so what I want to do though is kind of do more of a retrospective a little bit, but I also want to talk about the uh, you know uh, during the latter part of the year before Citizen Con I kind of went on this this piece about where people were with the development of Star Citizen. <clears throat> and so I'm kind of want to pick up from that a little bit, but I also want to do a little bit of, I guess it's a continuation of holiday wishes, but maybe just hear your ideas about Star Citizen, about the direction of the development, <clears throat> but even more, maybe even the future of the development. So first off, I want to open up with, um, the, 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 uh, well, it was the, the new trailer that CIG put out, uh, for the latest patch, the current patch that we have, which is 3.22. Um, I want to get your feelings a little bit on it. And, um, then I'm going to throw some questions at you that kind of build from that point, kind of building on that IAE citizen con, all that stuff. So today's show is called wreck to riches, and I'm going to give you what that means in a minute. So I know that's the title of the video that CIG put out, but I'm going to put a little bit of a, a spin on it. So just kind of bear with me here. So let's check out the video. If you've seen it, I know most of you have, but if you haven't, it'll be a good refresher and then we can talk about it. Okay, here we go.
Okie dokie. Um, so you say, Griff, where are you going with this thing? Because we've seen that video before. Um, here's where I'm going with this. <clears throat> this is the question in the title of our show today. Uh, <clears throat> this idea of wreck to riches. Um, after Citizen Con, there was obviously a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement for a lot of reasons. One, because we'd gotten together again. We hadn't done that in nearly four years, three years uh, for uh, for some people, four years for folks in the States who hadn't been. Um, a lot of excitement about what we saw on the screen. A lot of reveals in the sense of the anticipated Game Squadron 42. Um, the idea of hearing that the uh, CIG development teams would now start refocusing back on the Persistent Universe and that Squadron 42 was now in Polish, which would free them up to do that. Um, still some, you know, projections about what would happen by the end of the year between October and December. CIG said they would deliver 3.22. And so far, they've followed up on their word. CIG has been really, uh, the last few years, really particular about not putting out dates. Uh, people will ask when, and CIG is known for saying, we're not going to give any dates. We're not talking when. And they seem to not break that rule, but decide to say, okay, we're going to give dates. Um, so they did do that. And um, they said that they're gonna have some stuff to us by the end of the year. And they, if they, I think there's only maybe one or two things that they haven't delivered. And I think it was the clouds and fog. Um, and then last week on ISC, uh, Disco came on and shared some more information from CitizenCon. And not only did they state that they would deliver some things within the next 12 months from October to October, but they also said, here's some things that we feel confident that we possibly can deliver by the first six months uh, of, of 2024. So that was interesting. The fact that they, especially Disco, has said that, you know, here's some things that we, we feel pretty good about. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. And this is where I'm going with the question, wreck to riches, because you notice it says a question mark behind it. What are your feelings? Because for those of you who've been around any length of time, you will know that, uh, you know, we've seen some promising stuff. We don't have the baby yet, right? The cake isn't baked, as Kai would say. It's still in the oven, still being cooked. Ingredients have been thrown in and we're starting to see it now. It's stirred up a little bit and, you know, starting to heat the oven up, right? To get it going. And there's going to be this baking time. Um, my question to you is, your sentiments about a few years ago, many years ago, some years ago, the attitude about this game was that it was a wreck, that it was a train wreck, that it would never happen, that um, it was a scam, uh, that there would be a rug pull, that it was impossible, that it was overly ambitious, um, that it would, couldn't be done. Um, and it would seem that we have moved from some of those statements, some of them, because there are some people who still say some of these statements, it would seem that we have moved from that to maybe seeing the realization that maybe that project that was so ambitious could possibly happen, that maybe it's not a scam, that uh, maybe it will happen. And I'm not referring to just because we saw a great video at CitizenCon. <clears throat> I'm saying over the scope of years and the you know frustration, the questioning, the wondering, um, that now we're at a different place and we're at a place that maybe there's some realization, some things that are, that might say that, you know, maybe what Chris said he could achieve, maybe not all of it, but maybe a lot of it, maybe most of it he can achieve. My question is to you, are we moving from wreck to riches? Are we, do you feel that there is enough evidence out there that would show that maybe this will happen? Maybe that the thing that we've been waiting on for 10 plus years, this is 2023, so it's 11 years. For 11 years, the thing that we've been waiting on may actually happen. Now, I'm going to say that in scope and in light of all the other things that we see going on in the gaming industry right now. There's a lot of ambitious projects out there, a lot of things that people are looking forward to, have looked forward to. And I want you to keep in mind, and even though I'm saying Star Citizen, I want, I'm hoping that you're thoughtful enough to consider all that you've seen happening in gaming. And we can go back from 2016, uh, let's go back a little further. Let's go from 2014, 15, well, 2013. 
Let's go from 2013, 10 years ago, E3, something as simple as No Man's Sky. And the road that you've seen them travel over the past 12 years, 13 years for them, in fact, that you've seen them in the development of that game. And I'm sure many of you have followed that game. Um, some of you have followed it with, with you know, curiosity. Some of you have followed it with angst and anger. But you've, you've followed what's been going on with it. And you've seen that they have been able to, for lack of a better term, rise from the ashes, right? Then we've seen some games crash. Uh, I know when Fist of Face is on, he always talks about Anthem. And we, we read the fiasco of what happened with the development team and the, the, the publisher and how they really wore those folks out. Um, we've seen Elite Dangerous. That has come, done well, but is in some weird limbo state that we're not really sure what's going on. And, and number things aren't looking good for them, but they're still hanging in there, right? Um, Fallout 76, a game that came out with a lot of anticipation from the whole Bethesda Fallout series. Terrible launch, terrible game. Now has spun around, done some work to itself, and become a playable, enjoyable game for many people who enjoy that franchise. <clears throat> um, Cyberpunk 2084 game comes out a lot of anticipation from a major uh, AAA developer but doesn't do well on this launch doesn't deliver many of the things that they stated but now after a couple of years has finally reached a better place still not delivering everything they had to compromise on some things they wanted to do some console stuff they had to let some things go and focus in on the game but again affected by their publisher um what else, what other game do we have? Where there's anticipation for a uh, little oh, oh, Starfield. Starfield, great anticipation for that game. Game got delayed, pushed back a year. There's a lot of disappointment when that happened. Um, but then it comes out, many players enjoy it, but over time there's a, there's a feeling of mediocrity. It didn't come from it as much as people thought, but Bethesda is putting out patches right now. And they're saying there's gonna be another major patch coming out that will help develop that game even more. So I'm trying to say in light of what you see in all these other AAA and independent studios and games that they produced, GTA 6, anticipation, looking forward to that franchise. They've got a huge hurdle to climb, huge. Because GTA 5 is a solid game that they have a huge community of people playing. Will there be good transition to that? My daughter plays uh, The Sims. And um, even though she plays Sims 4, she says Sims 3 is where it's at because of what they could do in there. She says, there's some things that we could do in Sims 3 that we can't do in Sims 4. And it frustrates her. And she wonders why they didn't carry those things over, you know? But a lot of anticipation, but that's 2025. Did you guys hear the budget for that game? The budget for, uh, when I first heard it, I heard a couple of, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I heard it was exceeding 500 million, $600 million. And now I'm hearing a billion to two billion dollars. Now that probably includes marketing, which is understandable. But even so, man, billion dollars to produce a game. And some of you guys have known people have rode CIG for half a billion, for three hundred million, for six hundred billion. You know. Um, so yeah, that's my question to you guys. Where do you feel from this wreck to riches? Are we, you know, and in light of gaming in general, where do you see things at? You know, for gaming. So we got a couple of people in here already. Let me bring in Pops. That was a long intro, but I'm, I just want to put some background to it. Pops and Space is here with us. Pops, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, you are super soft, my friend. Oh, I am? Yes. Okay. I got you boosted now. I got you boosted all the way. Oh, okay. Okay. Need a boost the seat? That's better. Okay. I can hear you now. Okay. How are you? All right. I'm fine. How are you? Good. 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 Just working and... Enjoy. Uh, I, I think this, as far as the state of the gaming is, uh, in in my opinion, it, it, you know, um, Griff, game tugs at our hopes and our desires. I mean, we're shown certain things and we get excited, you know, some and we want to invest. And that's where Star Citizen, um, where I, I saw it and I, you know, learned about it uh, and I... Now, it, um, it's a player investment as far as what um, what I'm saying, not a financial in, in investment. It's it's a hope. It's a it's want to see it develop, and that's why, you know, I, I did, and I believe um, that they would. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a belief. It's it's uh, uh, not a guarantee that it will happen, but I be, I believed in it, mm -hmm. and uh, 
did and at one point in time i i couldn't stand star citizen mm -hmm. i i was like no nah, it's a scam mm -hmm. it's it's not it, it it you know because i saw that um package they were selling i'm like you know wow that's a tremendous pay to win situation going on over there right um but then i found out what they were doing mm -hmm. and that gave me hope i found out from people that were inside of the game uh, and they explained, you know, well, it's it's not just this monster ship you're buying, uh, a ship that people come in and play. And and it and it the game started making sense to me. Okay. You know, uh, it, it's a, a simulation of living in outer space, and that's the part that excited me. Um, you know about what what's going on and. Uh, but it, as far as uh, Wreck, I mean, I, I think all, you know, we're we're in open development. So we get to see a lot of things, a lot of problems. Um, people have a lot of opinions about where it's going, mm -hmm. um, if, it, if it's going to work out. Uh, as far as riches, they, they're breaking records as they go along each year. They keep getting better in, in as far as bringing in their funding, uh, it's a matter of opinion. What does that really mean uh, to the game? But I think the thing with CitizenCon, for me, just beyond uh, being there to meet the people, I think we got a lot of information. Uh, we've seen Chris Roberts uh, say something that he's never done before. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, done, he's given dates before, but he's, in, in my opinion, he's never been that emotional. And I think that emotion resonated through the community. Um, I, I don't think he was ever in it to scam anybody. Okay. Now, whether it, it failed or succeeded, that's a different story. I don't think he ever started out as a scam. Mm -hmm. That That's for sure. I don't think he's that type of a person. Uh, if a project fails, that doesn't mean it was a scam. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> so let me ask you, do you feel, <clears throat> excuse me, do you feel since like i said like in the beginning the feeling was that it was going to be a wreck that it wouldn't happen do you feel pretty confident that they will deliver whatever it is you're looking for i'm saying whatever it is because i don't know some people is squadron some people is the persistent mm -hmm. universe but for you do you feel confident or do you do you still have some hesitancy i um i'm not going to say it's a uh 100 percent uh, because things uh, things happen, mm -hmm. unforeseeable things happen. Mm -hmm. I think we will get. I think we will absolutely get something. <clears throat> okay. Now, how much on that scale of a hundred percent? It could be we may not get what we were prompt. We would a um, hundred systems or something like. That. We might get. Let let me. Uh, we might get sixty. Is that a fail? I wouldn't call it a fail, but that, that's my opinion. Okay. We may... You don't have to give me predictions I mean, on what we're going to get. I just want to know how do you feel. Do you feel you're going to be... Mm -hmm. Do you feel the project is in a, heading in a place where you will be okay? Yeah. I, I, my, my hopes okay. are that I will be okay. That's you your know? hopes. <laughs> okay, yeah. you're hoping you'll yeah. be okay. okay. I'm hoping I'll be okay. That's, okay. The, that's the best answer. That's the best answer you can give. Um, I'll that I can give you. I'll take it then. All right, Pop. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me bring in Kai Zinn next. Kai, are you there? Hello, hello. Hey, buddy. Good morning or good afternoon. How you doing? Okay. Uh, I'm going to have maybe a slightly different take on this than most of the people I think are going to come in on this question. Okay. I feel like we're actually entering a very dangerous time for Star Citizen development. Mm -hmm. Um. And here's why. And I want to preface this. I don't want everybody thinking like, oh, guys shitting on CIG or whatever, because right. I, this is kind of what I said last week. Mm -hmm. I think it's admirable that they're making great strides now and they're, we're going to actually see, I, I believe, I truly do believe sincerely mm -hmm. that we're going to see great strides in development over the next year or two of the project. We're going to see, uh, I, I believe... Within the next two years, we will see Squadron launched, mm -hmm. and we will see uh, Star Citizen at a beta state, at a mm -hmm. like a real like okay, we're really firming it up, and a lot of the loops and a lot of the main content is completed. Mm -hmm. 
the danger in this phase of development, as I said previously, mm -hmm. is when you go from the whiteboard sort of just open brainstorming, you can sort of vaguely promise all things to all people mm -hmm. in, a, in a very cheap way. You know, talk is cheap. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the point where you're actually implementing that development, when mm -hmm. you're actually making those decisions and implementing those things and getting it into onto servers, onto live, mm -hmm. onto beta, onto into players' hands, you have to make hard cuts, hard decisions. Mm -hmm. And in that, you hope that you attract more people with your progress and seeing what it is that you're concretely introducing to the game, then you lose in pissing them off because, oh, well, I thought the muncher was going to be big, munchy, munchy, mm -hmm. you know, teeth, claws, car, ripping it apart. Or I thought we were going to see more physical medicines. I didn't think everything was going to be beams and, and tractor beams and, you know, like laser beams of this type and that type, Healy beams and damage beams and tractor beams. And I thought we were going to see more physicalized whatever. Mm -hmm. When you get to the point when you're actually making progress, a lot of people that are the old, old, old heads, mm -hmm. the, the deeply in love, mm -hmm. they're the ones that, you know, if you talk to them right now on what they're going to do when they get their, uh, what is the one that, I forget the name of the, 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 I guarantee you it'll be the last ship Star Citizen ever introduces. The the big science ship with the super collider on it. What is it? Oh, the, the Endeavor. The Endeavor. Mm -hmm. the Endeavor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the ones that right now will sit there and talk to you for an hour and a half about how their endeavor is going to be like the Enterprise and they're going to be doing this and they're going to be doing that. And when you get to the point where you actually have to implement game loops of some kind, that starts to cut down on a lot of those people's wild dreams of like open, you know, just, just, just open brainstorming whatever mm -hmm. and and when you when you make an actual physical game a lot of people start to feel quote unquote broken promises that were yeah. never promised it right. was just conceptual discussions mm -hmm. and they let their brain run away with a bunch of shit yeah and and it's like well chris never said that yeah. Or and, and maybe even in some cases, Chris did say that, but part of good game development is making the smart choices. And maybe Chris said it in 2013, mm -hmm. but what's right for the game in 2024 or 2025 when you're approaching actual launch right. is not what was said in 2013 because lots of things have changed since then. Some for the better, some for the worse, some lateral, whatever. Right, right. But in the end, like, I just, I fear... That there's, the, we are actually coming up to a point where so many people are going to be happy, but a lot of the old heads aren't. I'm glad you said and that. And I, oh, I would encourage people to just try mm -hmm. to have an open heart and an open mind and look at what they're giving you and look at a bunch of people that are trying their best to give you a, a good experience. Right. And maybe you don't get the muncher of your dreams, <laughs> but maybe what you get all in all is a product that is 85% as good and 500% more actual yeah. and take the win. Yeah. There's a, um, you, you're, you're mentioning so many good points here, Kai, um, because we have <laughs> seen during the development, there were times when CIG made a decision to change something. Sometimes it was aesthetic. <clears throat> Sometimes it was technical. Um, I remember when the 300 series of ships changed. Um, and there were a lot of people who said, I don't like the new design. Um, I bought this ship because it had a more of a fighter, you know, look. Uh, it looks too, for lack of a better term, it became too sleek. You know, it became too, and I don't mean in a military way, I mean in the, in the sense of aesthetic design. It, it, you know, they were developing this origin idea of touring and luxury, and they felt that it was losing its edge in its look. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even though that seems aesthetic, there is a bigger picture of does this ship follow the lore design of what origin is supposed to be? And, and some of this, as you said, is, is literally being done as they progress through development. 
And one of the reasons why we do have that hateful clause, which even I hate, uh, when I buy or when I back, it says that this is subject to change. Um, and, and I think that I know I've gotten so used to clicking that button without thinking about it again. Um, but but it, it, things can change. And sometimes there'll be things that will change that, um, you know, I'll give you another good example. Just recently on the bikes, they've done something now where they've removed shields from, from the bikes. And um, the bikes now take damage much easier. And, you know, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, why did they do that? You know, they put it in the brochure and the specs that it had shields, and now they're taking the shields away. And, well, that's going to be a problem. But then I thought about it a little bit, and I said, well, first of all, the bikes, I, I took my X1 out the other day. This thing does 200 freaking meters a second, which is like 450 miles an hour or something like that, right? It's some ridiculous speed. Secondly, mm. I don't care what type of shields you put on a bike. If you hit a rock at that speed, <laughs> you're going to die. Um, if, 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 if that is something that they need to do in retrospect of development that mm. says, if we're trying to find some balance between fiction, cause fiction was being able to hit a rocket 400 miles an hour, uh, and reality, which is the fact that, you know, you're going to run into an accident and somewhere in the middle of that says, you got to be careful when you ride bikes. That's mm. what it comes down to. You can't be as flagrant because you and I both know even riding a motorcycle in real life. You, you know, it's not like when you're in a car. You do have to have a different level of safety and, and caution. Oh, yeah. When, when I was 17, bike. I got a motorcycle on the highway in Nebraska mm -hmm. up to about 115 and miles an no hour. Joke, is it? And thinking back on it now, <laughs> how stupid was that? Yeah, it's no joke. And, and so my, my, and to my point is that I'm saying if that change comes in because it in some way creates better balance in the game, even though I loved the exhilaration of flying at 200 miles per hour when that bike first came out. That's mm. just something that could happen in the game. Um, and, and you were just saying that there may be some hard decisions that CIG makes. Maybe this is a decision just because something that they thought they couldn't, that they thought they could achieve technically, they can't. That may be a real big freaking pill to swallow. You know what I mean? Mm. But it will be the pill that some people will have to decide. Can I swallow that pill? Let me go get a big glass of water or I'm going to, and spit that pill out and I just can't deal with it. I agree with you. I think that if we aren't careful about our superimposing our ideas of what the game will be on top of this, uh, and don't get me wrong, it's not that CIG doesn't kind of open up that genie's bottle to allow our imaginations to flow, but you always talk about the keeping perspective on expectation and we have to just kind of follow along with where things are going. Now, we just recently had a big thing with the... Um, the X1 bike when it came out, there was a simple read, two, two simple changes in the bike that I didn't like. One of them was they had changed the seat because most of the bikes kind of have a feel like, you know, speed, so you're leaning forward or something, you know, like a regular motorcycle. They had an upright seat that sat like this, right? I was like, ooh, I don't like that. And then, mm. they had, and then they had put canards on it and I didn't like that. And I was like, why'd you change it? It was, it was great the way it was before. Somebody at CIG thought, hey, adding canards, maybe they thought it was cool factor. Maybe there was some, aer I don't know. But I kept saying, well, was there some aerodynamic reason for it? Maybe, whatever. So anyway, to make a long story short, bike comes out. Not be, look, Guys, I'm not saying this had anything to do with me. I'm just saying that they may have changed their minds on their own, or maybe other people said something. But the seat was no longer the upright seat. It had the motorcycle feel to it. And the canards were gone. Now, what they did do was put the canard on the velocity, the racer. Hmm. Now, to me, I kind of, in my brain, even though I know Carnars don't make a difference on a levitating bike, I kind of said in my head, well, maybe it, you know, they're coming up with some reasons for if you're racing, those Carnars give you better handling because they are wings, they, they move. Maybe that's what they did. So for me, that now, was it a deal breaker for me that they put Carnars on the bike? Was I going to not ride the bike? No, I was going to ride it. I may not have liked it, but I was going to ride it. You know, some people were like, you know, I was reading on the um, the, uh, the origin uh, uh spectrum post some people were like i'm melting my bike <laughs> you know and i'm like okay but, you know maybe is they don't like the look of it enough because some people did that when the 300 i got modified but i think your point is very well taken that um those of us who have superimposed or have imagined for a long time what we want this game to be there is a great possibility that maybe you'll get 80 percent of it maybe you'll get 95 percent, 93 but you better be ready for that 3% or that 8% or that 
that doesn't get delivered. You know, I mm. think I think you mentioned a very good point on that, so that people keep. And I'm glad you said, it. Kai. You always end up coming up with stuff that has to do with my next questions. So, because <laughs> the next <laughs> the next question is satisfaction guarantee. But mm. but no, I, I I appreciate everything you said. I think and, we do have to keep and, perspective. The other thing about that, Griff, is maybe you get forty percent mm -hmm. of what you were expecting. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe sixty percent of this is not what you have in your mind. Mm -hmm. But can I just point out that that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Right. I've had times where I go to see a movie mm -hmm. based on just seeing the poster and hearing a little bit of buzz about it. And lately, more and more, I try to not even watch the trailers for movie because they yeah. spoil the whole Opening. damn thing. Mm -hmm. There's been mm -hmm. plenty. I saw a movie today. Mm -hmm. I saw a, a Amazon Prime's got this level 16. It's a thriller. It's for mm -hmm. free. It's these girls, all these young girls being raised in this like weird facility. And it's a thriller. Like, what the hell is going on? What is this? What is this all about? Is this the future? Is this whatever? Mm -hmm. I didn't have any clue how it was going to play out. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I was like, oh, damn, that was good. That was dark, mm -hmm. but it was good. And so what I'm pointing out is maybe what you expect you're going to get, you only get 40% of it mm -hmm. and 60% of what you get isn't at all what you're thinking. Right. Have an open mind and an open heart and give it a try. You've already good. put in your money. Give mm -hmm. it a try. Maybe you'll like it. That's Maybe true. this guy, this Chris Roberts guy, <laughs> not for nothing, mm -hmm. he kind of, he's, he's made a couple good games. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a little bit of faith, go for the ride and see where it Let's comes out. see where out. it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Good point, Kyle. All right. All right Talk to you later, Thank brother. You, man. All righty. Okay. Good stuff. Let me bring in Zirin. I haven't talked to Zirin in a little while. Zirin, you there? Yo, yo, yo. How are, up, you? Boss? How are you? Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. We hear you fine. Okie dokie. Um, I was just discussing this with Fist Two Face. You know how this update seems to be largely around the salvaging aspect of the game, kinda? Mm-hmm. Um, my gripe and it's been building to a crescendo for a long time, mm -hmm. is we there's so many things that have been promised. I was listening a bit to Kaizen, too, mm -hmm. about the salvage mm -hmm. bit, of, about things that are promised. Well, with salvage, we have a backpack that has mysteriously disappeared. We have a... I think there was a two-handed salvager tool that just, you know, we saw the art for, but it, we never saw it again. <laughs> and... We also need a medium salvage ship because of all the paths, you know, for somebody wanting to get into a profession, mm -hmm. profession, we only have two ships. Right. You have the small vulture and we have the reclaimer. Mm -hmm. And the reclaimer, as everybody knows, is a jank nightmare, especially the elevators, <laughs> because... And it doesn't even have a docking collar that mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. So anybody who owns a Reclaimer, my hat's off to you. You guys are a different breed. <laughs> oh, seven, Commanders. <laughs> well, I agree. The um, yeah, There were some things that they showed us that we haven't gotten yet. 100% agree with that. Um, in regard to the ships, I would have to say this. When mining came out, there were only two ships then. There was the mole and, exactly. the, and the prospector. So I think that they will deliver that because we're seeing a pattern of CIG creating kind of like a entry level starter, which is the vulture is supposed to be. And then the reclaimer, which is kind of like their capital. So there probably will be something. I have no doubt, in fact, that there will be something in between uh, that fits in because we've seen that happen with the, with the mining now because the mole and the arasta are kind of like that middle ground for that one. So if they're following that pattern, I would think that, yeah, I think that will come in time. Uh, believe it or not, the Reclaimer has been fine for most people recently. Um, the elevators have been working for most people. We're not getting the glitching and stuff anymore. And people have been hey, salvaging. People, I don't know, but I can tell you now, I've got plenty of friends over the last week who told me they've been making millions going out and salvaging in their Reclaimers. So, Oh, yeah. I can confirm that. Last mm -hmm. night, me and a crew of about three vultures and a caterpillar made 5.27. Yeah. Last week, I watched Space Tomato take two reclaimers out and in two hours make over 8 million without even trying. They weren't even trying. They, they yeah. literally did it as a fluke. 
So the Reclaimer is in a better place now. It's not 100%, but it is in a better place. Uh, but to your yeah. point, I think this goes into the idea of, you know, again, that's why I said, are we saying, you know, from years ago to now, how do you feel? Do you, let me ask you that before I let you go. Do you feel that CIG is moving from rec to a better place? Or do you think there's still kind of a lot they need to do for you? This is just for you. For me, they're moving definitely from a rec to the riches bit because they're now finding that they have a need for more ships mm -hmm. of these criteria, like the mining ship, the Arrestra. Mm -hmm. They're having to have a new notch to put in between the Orion and the Mole, mm -hmm. because a lot of people are like, hey, we need a bigger ship. Mm -hmm. And just like with me and Salvage, you're needing that next step from the Vulture mm -hmm. to Ar whatever Argo or Grey mm -hmm. Cat or whoever puts out to the Reclaimer, because they're beginning to fill out those progression loops. Okay. And it's Coming much quicker now that Squadron 42 focus is shifting more back to the PU. Okay. Okay. I agree. Okay. Well, let's look forward to it because I'm a big salvager too. So I'm looking forward to another salvaging ship as well, somewhere in the middle ground. Okay. Right. All right, buddy. Thanks, Zirin. All righty. That was Zirin. Let me bring in Fist to Face. Fist, are you there? Hey, hey. What's up, Griff? How are How you? How's everybody out there? Okay, so um, <clears throat> my, my take on the question, do I think CIG is moving from Rex to Riches? I believe so. Mm -hmm. And my take is that um, not just from the point of fact of, uh, you know, with salvaging, but uh, I look at their development, like we could just look at it from where it was. Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, from a hanger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from the very beginning, <laughs> right. when you showed me those videos, you... Well, Look at what we had. You had a hangar mm -hmm. that you could walk around. Right. Now you have a, a universe. Well, not a, a universe, but you know you have a system mm -hmm. right now, and now soon to become two systems, and so on and so forth. So when I look at it from you know just a general statement, yes, I do think that it is going from there, from from where it was to where it is, and even beyond that. Okay. Um. Now, as far as the things that I would like to see happen. Wait, don't do you that because it's mean? coming up. I got a third question I'm, never for mind. the day. All right, I'm going to leave it alone. Future, so. I'm gone. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm I don't want you to spoil it because I want you to save it for that section. But you you do okay. feel, and I'll ask you the same question I asked earlier. You're feeling pretty confident. How confident do you feel that CIG will deliver most of what you're looking for in the game? I'm going to say about, it's, it's a high one. It's okay. about a good 80%. Okay. You fair know, enough. fair enough. That's a fair number. You know, all right, all yeah. right. You left some room for error. Cool. All right, bro. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> all right, we got Togi coming in, the man himself with the voice. Togi, you there? What up? Hey, what's up, man? Oh, you know, chilling, yeah. getting my my my, my shopping done. Oh last yeah, minute. wrapping it up. Okay, I got you. What you got Depends. for us? <clears throat> so I think this is the year that we find out. If Star Citizen has any riches to give. Mm. Okay. You know, because this is the year that we find out if this whole thing works. Good point. You know, we've mm -hmm. seen, yeah, we've seen, you know, server meshing mm -hmm. for a hallway. Mm -hmm. Can we do more than a hallway? Mm -hmm. You know, can we do more than a system? Can we break it down into planets? Right. You know, this is, this is the, the, the put up or shut up year. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I am very apprehensive mm -hmm. of this coming year, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like we were talking about a couple of days ago, where I think in six months, we'll have a pretty good idea mm -hmm. of what the future of Star Citizen is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's good, but yeah. ugh, man, I just, it's a good point. You told me, I mean, this is, I agree with you. This is a crossroad. It, it yeah. really is. It, it, it technically delivery wise. I mean, we're, we're not, and we're not talking about a crossroad because of more time, guys. We really are talking about they're working on some pretty vital stuff now. I mean, they've always worked on things, tools, and blah 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 blah. But this thing with replication and server meshing, so it's much huge. of it hinges on that. Yeah, this is a mm -hmm. linchpin of the entire thing. Yeah, this yeah. is the um, what's it in an arch? The capstone? The arch stone? Yep. Really? yep, capstone. Yep. 
it's the foundation yeah, was, of, where, of for us to be able to do all the things that we'd like to see happen in the game. Yeah. 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 No, and you know, it's, it's really going to be about whether or not they can get it in as quickly as they would like to, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, if it scales the way that they need it to, Yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot. It, it's a, it's a very exciting time, but it's also <laughs> rather scary. Yeah, I agree. You know, I'm like, oh man, I'm holding on to like ten thousand dollars worth of ships. If, if, if this year isn't good, uh. it'll be stuck in Stanton. Yeah. That'll be the name of the new thing. Stuck in Stanton will be the next. Show. Yeah, but uh, no, no, dude, you're, I, you know, you're not to deliver. You're not to deliver a bad news. You're deliverer of a true reality. Because even we've talked about this before. Getting in, involved in this project has always had some level of risk. No matter how yep. confident you feel about reputation and Chris Roberts and, you know, the people, when you meet them, it, there are things that can happen. And, you know, so far fortune has smiled on them. Um, and, and, and time, sometime hasn't, but at least they've been able to survive everything from the technical hurdles to COVID to financing, but that still doesn't mean that there's still some hurdles there and they're very real ones. And the ones you're mentioning are, you yeah. said it, the linchpin, you, you said it. I can't say anything better than what you said. That this is crucial to this thing moving forward, and without it, we yeah, yeah, you know, this is if they can do this, mm -hmm. you know, then then we're on the other side of the hill. Yeah. It's all downhill after that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Good point. All right, buddy. Thank you much. Yep. Togi bringing the real as always. All right, very good, guys. Um, let's move on to the next one because I said that uh, Kai and and both Kai and Fist were kind of doing their psychic mind reading. <laughs> the show this week um this next one <clears throat> it's called satisfaction guaranteed um this is the question for you guys uh, what are you doing to keep your expectations in the right place when it comes to star citizen now and star citizen upon its official quote-unquote release and i hope that question is making sense i'm asking you um after everything that's happened this past year, you know, it kicked off really funky three point. Well, before 3.18, we were all excited because we heard that this new patch was coming out with the database and start working on the replication layer. Then 3.18 comes out and it's like, ah, oh, and you know, this horrible, you know, weeks and weeks of people not being able to get into the game, the game being broken, frustration, aggravation. Then they slowly start to come back. Invictus comes around, we get a little bit of a breather. You know, something familiar, something we could we're cool with. Then Alien Week comes out, nothing special happens. We feel blah again. Then the summer comes around, and CIG gets real quiet, and we start wondering what's going on, and there's not enough information, and we all start feeling a certain kind of way. Then Citizen Con comes, and folks get revitalized, they get re-energized, they get reinvigorated, and get excited again a little bit. <laughs> um. F8 goes on sale, you know, some new ships come out that we didn't expect in Arastra, you know, Sayulin, um, some other ships that we were looking for, the C series or the Spirit series comes out, the Zeus series comes out, riding off of lore, right? Then we get to IAE, we get through that, and then we hear about 322, that comes out. But what are you doing right now to keep your expectations in the right place? What are you doing? Um, do you have a certain perspective? Have you said, I'm not buying any more ships? That's how I keep my sanity. So I don't chase after this, you know, next new shiny thing. Or have you got your fleet to a certain place where your fleet, you're satisfied? And I feel like I've given toward the game to support it. And I've got me a nice fleet to start out with to play the game with me and my friends or by myself. Um, are you still holding off? Are you not? supporting the game are you not and i don't mean not supporting it but have you not bought into it you know you're watching you're paying attention you're you're curious about it uh but you know to keep from going down the rabbit hole you said i'm just going to wait and see what comes out and then i'll decide you know where are you what are you doing to keep your expectations in the right place when it comes to the game the way it is now and then also upon release i'm gonna bring pops back in and we'll pick it up from there pops you there oh uh, yes sir Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, I've, I've learned to, what do you call it, curve my enthusiasm in that since when I first came in Star Citizen mm -hmm. and 
me and my son, we were running cargo. We ran into trouble, you know, shit would blow up for no reason. Mm -hmm. And we kind of sat down. We like, wait a minute, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. We are, you know, uh, <laughs> getting all, you know, uh, over alpha. Mm -hmm. And we said, wait a minute, you know. So, you know, we learned to chill, off, okay. you know, off of that. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, for me, I've kind of, I, I'm kind of, like I said before earlier, I'm kind of, I kind of keep myself at that 90%. I, I, I believe in the game. I love to hear the news about the game, uh, where they're going. But I know uh, when they do uh, server meshing, when they uh bring in uh anything i mean we, we just got some new hair mm -hmm. i mean that you could go in one day and that hair is standing on the top of your head mm -hmm. you know so you have to ex expect those things you can't say oh man my hair was great last week this week is it just don't have that bounce to it you know they're, they're testing so i don't in you know get myself wrapped up uh it works it's always going to work because they're they're testing things and and that's really basically my my thing is that you know let them move forward let them do what they have to do but I know things are going to break is what I'm saying we're going to get them and then I know they're going to break out. So, so the fact that you, you know, keep in mind that it's an alpha that helps you when those frustrations come you kind of remind yourself okay this is just what happens that's pretty much what you're yeah. saying okay Fair yeah enough. so I'm satisfied with with the p progression that they're that they're making right now in alpha so okay yeah very yeah. cool thanks pops all right all righty pop says he's fairly satisfied let's bring in fist to face next fist you there hey mm -hmm. i it's the same as with pops um my dad um my thing is because for me um the reason why i i i purposely and i, and I take it a step further i purposely don't go on to the spectrum and, and forums too much mm -hmm. i go on there I, I purposely don't read uh the squadron 42 newsletter mm -hmm. i purposely don't read a lot of the updates and sometimes unless it's something like if i'm going to go into the game simply because i know from past experience mm -hmm. and i'll get an example lost ark when lost ark was announced i religiously <laughs> looked for updates from Smilegate mm -hmm. every damn day. Mm -hmm. And it drove me crazy because I religiously looked at, um, I forget the gentleman's name. He he spoke about it on YouTube, would watch his updates all the time about um, Lost Ark uh -huh. and would talk about it. And he would talk about Diablo uh, 3 at the time was out. And I remember when you know, uh, Lost Ark got released. I played it in on, on the Russian server, mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth, and was disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I remember all the hype about Lost Ark. It was huge hype about Lost so, Ark. So, so, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, so again, it, there's that thing where I had to learn to say, okay, what are my limitations? Mm -hmm. What are my flaws when it comes to certain things? When it comes to a game okay. like that right so i have to learn how to you know like my dad says you know, curb my enthusiasm and the best way for me to curb my enthusiasm is sometimes don't even look at it okay all right keep a, you you keep a safe distance basically <laughs> exactly I, I don't even look at mm -hmm. it because then my mind like I, we I, I can come up with all kinds of things mm -hmm. and then problem is is when you start theory crafting and stuff and you can go down that rabbit hole and mm -hmm. start putting together well guess what i want this and they said this <laughs> like you said oh my god and then next that now you standing at the gates of <laughs> Chris's house with your pitchfork and your and your and your torch and you like, damn it! You said this. No, we didn't say that. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a good point. The way to protect your mentality too. I don't. Yeah. I don't blame you on that one. Okay, Fist. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> that's pretty good. Keep a safe distance. All right, we're gonna bring in uh, Fast Cart. FC is here with us. FC, how are you? He is muted. Let's see if he's gonna unmute. He may unmute. There okay, you know, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm on my phone, so I'm not used to using it on my phone. Mm -hmm. so, so the question is, what am I doing to keep my expectations or the right place? Mm -hmm. See, 
I don't know if you heard about this, but I, 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 there's a show that goes on every Thursday that mm -hmm. shows ISC and STL, and I, 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 I tend to watch those, and that helps me to, to keep my expectations. No, that, but no, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. What I really do, I listen to this smart guy. You may have heard of him. His name is Griffin Gaming RPG. He, he, he helps keep my, he, he helps me keep my, my expectations um, reasonable. You're joking no, on that one, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, uh, but it's a combination of, 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 of all that in, 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 in a literal sense. Mm -hmm. Like, when I... Um, just following the, the, the development mm -hmm. and trying to keep track. The, the, but the problem is, we want so many shows these days that it's hard to rem keep, keep track of what's being said and, 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 and what's accurate and what, what, what knowledge to, to replace or what knowledge is absolutely. So, so some, sometimes it's like I've gotten more stuff than I've learned these yeah. days yeah. After, after so many years of, of following, <laughs> of following the, 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 the development. Especially something like maybe Dr. the Space Man. We heard about that in 2013, right? And then, if, and then when it finally re released, not finally, but you know, the iteration that, that we're used to may not be the iteration that that it comes with when it going to actually launch. So, I, so I, I just try to follow follow the development and keep track of what, what, what's accurate and what's up to date, and do my best there. But you know, you, but you mentioned like fleet and stuff. Uh, currently, my, I think I, I think I'm happy, happy with my fleet. I don't see anything adding to my fleet, but we'll see. Yeah, you mentioned a good point about uh, about the death of a spaceman. Um, that was probably one of the longest running. Um, what's the word you want to call it? Game feature that one of the one of the most spoken of. Right? It was one of the things that distinguished Star Citizen from a lot of other games. Was this idea of this death of a spaceman thing. And we had, it literally had become kind of like a part of um, the, the mantra, not mantra, but it, you know, it just became a part of what we believed. And then when they finally did release it. It almost became like, like and I don't want to say a ghost piece because we know it's right. coming, but it was almost like, okay, like a legend almost. Right, exactly, because, exactly. It was, it, was major, about it. it was a major piece, a major piece. Chris wrote a right. whole piece on that, in fact. Um, but interestingly enough, when it did come out, what we got was a variation on it. It didn't change dramatically, but it was tweaked, right? And it had to be tweaked based upon some things that they've learned over that 10 year period, as you mentioned. Um, and again, you have to leave room for that because if you go back and hard press and say, well, that's not what he wrote 13, you know, 10 years ago, you know, you can get yourself really flustered. I think Kai, that's what Kai was touching on earlier. Sometimes there are things that just have to change and we have to kind of leave enough room that those changes could happen. They might even happen to the thing that is your most favorite thing in the game. You know, see if, it, if it's somebody else's favorite thing, it's not a problem. You know what I mean? But when it's my, yeah. when it's my thing, it's an issue, you know? Um, like, okay. Another example, the Benny Mushkin was concept in 2013, then it, then it reconstructed but then in 2017 yeah. and then and, and 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 at the CityCon 2020, I want to say no, 20, 2021. Yeah. But you know, they, they, they were you know, it looked like it's going to release, and then yeah. lo and behold, they lost the the, the developers. So it, it has its ups and downs. But you know, let me try to keep track of it and try to keep keep up to date. That, let, that's what I'm trying to do to keep my eye. Uh, let me let me ask you a question. This is, right a, this is an honest question because it's it's, it's a thoughtful question that I've never asked you. You and I both know when the Vanu Merchantman first came out, it was a much smaller ship. And in, in, in some ways, we probably thought it was even a much more manageable ship. And I always tease you about it, but I am asking you on a serious level because I've never thought about it this way even myself until now. There are some people who might actually feel a certain kind of way about the Vanu Merchantman growing to the size that it is now because now it's going to also require greater, you know, resource, fuel, management, you know, you know, it's not the small thing that it was before. Um, is, you know, that's one of those changes. You see what I'm saying? It's something that changed that in the beginning, there were people say, well, the Bandu Merchant was only like a little bit bigger than it was. It was what was a kind size or something or something? I forget what size it was, but it wasn't huge. But now it has grown to capital size. Is, is that something that you've had to rethink? Not that you would get rid of it or anything like that. I'm just saying, has it made you reassess that ship now from a different lens? since you've seen the dynamics of, you know, a pretty major change in that particular show. 
Actually, honestly, I, you know, I, I get, get that this is the honest question, but, you know, back in 2013 or 2014, well, actually, no, when did I get it? In 2014, mm -hmm. when, I, when I got to Michigan, when I got it a year, year after the concept. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I heard about the blades, and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to, I'm one of those people who start back mm -hmm. then, oh, I'm going to stick all these blades, and I'll be able to do an immersion and fine. Mm -hmm. I don't need the eight people. Now, you know, I know better, and I know more, and, and I'm not expecting the, 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 the um, I'm, I'm not going to need some people, I need some help to, 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 to run it. Yeah. So I, I'm, watching, I'm watching all this new stuff about repair and keeping, keep your ship on, on the task and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it, it has me scared, but it does have me nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's going to be a lot for, for to, uh, to try to do it all on my own. I'm not, not going to try to do it all on my, all on my own. But I'm definitely going to have to find some people to, to help me with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, we've, we've talked about people who have melted certain ships because they realize that they're, you know, the work and everything to maintain them might be a bit much, you know. Um, I know some Javelin owners who were like, man, this might be a little bit too much to be doing. Um, so I, that's why I was wondering, because that ship definitely, has, it's definitely one of those examples of, you know, the, from the original concept part to what we have now is this completely, you know, it's a different monster altogether. Uh, but it's yeah, definitely it's, become a bigger ship. The other thing is, like, the other thing is, uh, you know, I bought a second and that's going to be even bigger than the Mesmer. So it's like, you know, I have my dreams about what, when, when we're doing Endeavor, but we'll see how, how those dreams work out versus reality. But yeah. so we did a while, a while ago. <laughs> good point. Good point. Okay. All right, FC. Thank you, brother. All right. All righty. That's a good one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That one on satisfaction guaranteed. Okay. We are getting ready to hit our uh, next question. What time is it? Oh, we're doing good on our time. That's awesome. Um, Thank you guys for that. I saw a bunch of people come in. I didn't get to say hi to Raytheon. Good to see you. Uh, is it M Morga? 07 to you as well. Striker, good to see you. Thanks for first time speaking up. Thank you, thank you. All right. Here's the third one for the day. Predicting the future. Predicting the future. Um, would you like to see CIG create other games or media based around Star Citizen or the Squadron 42 franchise? Ooh, does that spell that right? Franchise. Yes, I did. Um, is there supposed to be a CH in there? Franchise. That's his franchise. Franchise. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? I, I, I'm kind of throwing this question out because you guys know that uh, Chris Roberts, when he did Wing Commander, that did expand into a franchise of other, some other things. Stories and movies and things of that nature. Um... Then there's always this question about CIG, how will they continue to bring in revenue? And of course, there's a million ways they could bring in revenue. So I'm not saying this is the way they should do it. I'm just throwing this out there as a question to you guys. Do you, would you like to see CIG create other games or media based around Star Citizen? And we could talk about everything from mobile apps. At one point they had the RSI app that was out that would help us log in, but they've talked about the fact that they do want to have this thing where some type of mobile connection uh, with Spectrum and all this other stuff, right? Um, would you like to see them produce a mobile game? <laughs> so it's it was it? Squadron 42 Online, like Star Trek Online. Would there be a mobile game? Um, would you like to see a movie or a TV series on Netflix? Uh, you know, something along those lines. What are some things that you would like, or, or you think they should just say, hey, you got enough stuff going on already. Just do Squadron and do the Persistent Universe and let's just keep it all there. Don't start spreading yourself out. Some of you guys know uh, Bethesda is putting out this thing on Fallout, right? I mean, the trailer looks good. You know, not mind you, Fallout's been out for a little while. It didn't come out right after, so they had some time. Uh, but yeah, what do you think? Do you think CIG should expand and create other games uh or even other games that have nothing to do with star citizen all right let me bring in pops in space and see what he has to say pops you there uh, yes i am here i'm here uh -huh. definitely i've spoke to you about this before yeah. um movie absolutely i, I would love to lean back in my, my easy chair and <laughs> take my popcorn and watch a, a squadron 42 movie uh, would uh, I think I would really enjoy it, just to make sure it's, it's well written and acted, um, okay. which I think uh, Chris is absolutely capable of doing. 
Okay. Uh, I would like to see a mobile app where I could, if I'm, uh, if I have uh, certain uh, things being processed at certain locations, uh-huh. could go into my mobile app and uh, progress, okay. maybe my money. And if I'm uh, the captain of the ship or whatever, I could pay people from that mobile app. So I may not be able to log into the game. I could do it on my, you know, while I'm at the mall or w- whatever mm-hmm. and pay them. I would, I would like to see that. Um, okay. Just a couple of ideas. That I- Those are good. All right, Pops. Yeah. I can, I can dig right. that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me bring in Fist of Face. Let's see. I got a couple of things here that people said. Um, who was it? Risto. Risto said, I'd like to see them make toys of the ships similar to the old G.I. Joe vehicles. That would be interesting. Could you imagine, Risto, if this actually like expanded to a point where there were like kids' toys that were being produced from the game? That would be an interesting prospect. Okay, we got Fist to Face in here joining us. Hey. Fist. Uh, as far as the toys thing, um, I think Squadron 42 and Star Citizen would have to become a household um name. And yeah. I don't think well, it's not there yet. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you know no, no, not I'm yet. Saying. Right, right, right. But you know, it's, it's not there. It's yeah. thing, you know, he just said he would like to see some toys. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that's that 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 would be cool. I mm-hmm. mean, because then that, that lets you know, like all those franchises from He Man and all of those Saturday morning cartoons that we used to have. You yeah. know that uh, you know we <laughs> used to have how hot they were. Mm-hmm basically all a part of our lives but you know as far as for me what i would like to see from cig to create other games i would definitely like to see it um as far as star citizen and squadron 42 franchise um as far as the movie is concerned yeah it, it would be cool hopefully i'm just being honest be would, you want, the, would you want the movie to be something that <laughs> mirrors the game like in other words just a motion picture version of what we see in the game or would you want the movie to be an extension, like like something we haven't seen. I would, I, I, I yes, I would prefer something that we we haven't seen. But okay. at the same time, too, I understand from a, uh, I guess from 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 the movie side or business side, they're gonna have to cater it to the masses. From right, right, you know, folks who, who don't even know the game. Introducing it, they have to be able to introduce you know the, I mean? the universe right. to, they, to they the have to, exactly. So mm-hmm. I. I as what I would want versus what is really going to be. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So cool. that that's how I see it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Fist. Appreciate that, brother. Yeah. Uh we'll see what happens. Now <laughs> maybe maybe yep. maybe it'll be Netflix. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can ask uh, this. You know what? I don't know why Discord is acting dumb today. There we go. All right. I got Kai Zen coming in. I'm actually gonna ask Kai another question too while he's here. Kai, you there? Hey, hey, hey buddy. Hey, hey. What you got? All right. So I like the idea. Honestly, I think the best thing you can do from CIG's standpoint Mm -hmm. is to set up a thing that will generate more opportunities from them internally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can do a TV series Mm -hmm. or whatever, a la Babylon 5 or whatever, and do a a nice little thing that you spin off for a couple seasons. That's cool. Okay. I would like to see a series of novels. There Ooh. were a couple of Elite Dangerous novels yes. that were done that were very good. Yes. There were a couple of, uh, oh, hello, bonjour, Commander Maximi. <laughs> uh, old commander from the real big guy from the French mm. uh, elite community that has now become big into the French star citizen community. Mm. Um, I would like to see a series of novels that they could generate, which c- could then... It's the same weird. way, similar, when, when Blizzard was hitting on all cylinders mm-hmm. with World of Warcraft, mm-hmm. they would put out these really cool novels that would then, in three to five years, spin off into a really cool expansion. Right. Where you had stuff like, there was that one where you had Neela Saran, and then later on in the in the Burning Crusade, you had the the Karazhan with Neela Saran was, was in there. Mm. Um, so I would love to see... A series of novels like that. What I would also love to see is there's a thing, uh, what is it, GURPS and Roll20, where it's a system where you can basically take any sort of gamified mm. thing. You could take, uh, uh, you know, The Expanse right. or or Shadowrun or this, that, and the other, mm. and you can sort of modify it to an open system. Cool. I would love to see tabletop mm. uh, expansions with this, and then people could play. 
I think it would reach out to a lot of the tabletop community. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that heard about Star Citizen 10 years ago mm -hmm. from the big Kickstarter okay. and heard for, you know, maybe the last seven years or so, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's a big scam, it's a scam, it's a scam. I think if you were to reach out to a lot of tabletop nerds through stuff like novelizations and, and, and tabletop role-playing, they could see it, they could become immersed into it, and they could say, yeah, what's the deal with this Star Citizen thing anyways? Let me see. And start to actually research it a little bit more and see maybe some newer sentiments on it that are less on the, it's a scam, and more of the, wow, this is a big deal. Mm. Okay. I, I, yeah. I was thinking books in my head, but I didn't, you know, I didn't think about it going to the level of what you're talking about, like almost like how in Star Wars, you know, some books almost literally become canon. You know, yeah. the writing is that good. Um, and it would be interesting to see once we get that storyline for Squadron 42, <coughs> seeing whether or not it expands further. And of course, people can always do even something on Star Citizen, you know, the persistent universe. But yeah, that's that's a really cool idea. And you um, get those guys with the graphic novels, you know, you get mm, those guys that like did the like the Walking Dead or whatever. Yeah. You reach out to him, you know, some guy like that, that like, you know, really, really can command an audience right. and give him some cool, interesting characters within the, the sort of known Star Citizen universe and or let him or her make some of their own, you know, interesting little characters and, and whatever. And for all you know a year from now two years from now five years from now there's a new system and that's a you know in this new system that they gave that that person to play with a lot of those characters tie in and then you get you know like just things that will bring people into the community mm. okay okay so right. what did you want to ask me? i want you to stay here i'm typing this up now okay give me one second thank you who's that who just came give us that insta oh instigator thank you so much for the sub so thank you for the sub earlier too. I'm sorry I didn't get to mention that earlier. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Um, Pop Pops has a good point in the in the chat there. He mm -hmm. says one thing they should do is not oversaturate. Just you got to get you got to and mm. and I agree with that. You want to find the right sort of balance. You want to get you want to get it to as many eyeballs as possible without getting it to that annoying part of like people are just like uh, this again. You don't want it to be the raid shadow legends of whatever, <laughs> where everybody clicks a video and they're like, Jesus Christ, this thing. Again. That's funny. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to throw, and I know this is, you all want to see Kai's hair catch fire. Get ready. Get your cameras out. Here we go. Get your, okay. get your, get your... <laughs> I don't have much hair, so <laughs> let me, let I me... still got the Marine Corps mm -hmm. high and tight. Let me put this together here. <clears throat> um... Okay, because someone put this in chat earlier, um, and it was the thing that came up, if, and I know you already know this. <coughs> um, as many of you all know, Squadron 42 um, was taken off of the CIG store <clears throat> sometime back. And at first, Here people, comes. there were all types of rumors when it went off, right? There were people who were like, oh, there's a problem with the development, they've removed it. Uh, they're they're getting people over in Germany are saying it's illegal. All, all types of stuff came up, right? And and I think we kind of here at Soul Citizens kind of took the attitude of saying, you know what? They're probably taking it down because they're probably getting closer to release, and it probably the new price will come out when the game is released at this point. And now that we know that it's being polished, that probably sounds a little bit more in order. Um, so my question to you, Kai, since you are here, mm. you're going to help me kick this off. Because I'm sure there are going to be some people who have something to say on this one. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to put two questions in here. Should this be? <laughs> oh, this is, that, the first question will probably be the one against Kai. Kai will be okay with the rest of it, I think, guys. So y'all follow me in my prediction here. Okay, so here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, here's the thing. I got to make sure I put this up here the right way. All right, boom. Squadron 42's release. Should there be a pre-order? Is the first question to you guys. <laughs> and those are the prices to me that mm. I think CIG should launch at. I spelled mm. collectors wrong. I, I think, and I know there are going to be people who say, 
oh, it's going to be worth more. And I, and to you, maybe that is the case, but I mm. think my numbers come from a place of what does not make CIG look bad. Now I know guys that some games are now a few games are coming out at sixty nine ninety five for their launch price. I know that, know it. Um, but the overhead that these companies have put out, they're cat, they're waiting on that money to come back in. So that's their thing. But CIG has had money coming in. Now, I'm not saying they don't need more money. I'm just saying, what do you think is a right amount or a fair amount? You do not have to use my numbers. I would love to hear if your numbers are higher than lower than mine to see what you guys think for the release of Squadron 42. Let's, let's assume some things. Triple A game, let's assume at least 40 hours worth of gameplay or more. Let's just assume that, okay? And let's assume that a standard edition is just that. You just get the standard edition of the game. And let's assume that uh, deluxe good. edition means that maybe there's some type of um, cosmetics or something that come in there with it. You know, like, I don't know, a piece of armor or something like that. I don't know, but nothing that's going to give you some great advance. And then let's say that a collector's edition is some type of physical, tangible something that you get. Uh, it could be a... You know, we just saw with Starfield, they put out a freaking $300 for a watch. You know, it, but there's something. Maybe it's a pad or a, 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 a Moby glass thing. A little, you know, the, the size of a, a, what is this thing called, Kai? Um, I got one. I can't even think of it. Fitbit, right? Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. You know, that, mm -hmm. what you guys give me your ideas of what you would like to see for a standard deluxe and collectors and give me your ideas about pricing. But I'm going to go back to the first question and hit Kai. And then anybody who wants to come in can come in and share. Kai, what do you think? Should there be a pre-order or do you just think it should be? I and mean, when I say pre-order, let me rephrase that. Let me, let me rephrase that. Cause I don't mind if somebody wants to pre-order that's up to them, but I am curious about pre-order with a early access. What do you okay. think about either of those? And then we'll go from there. So number one, should they do a pre-order? The answer is obviously 100% yes. Okay. But they should not do that pre-order mm -hmm. until they are damn sure that they are ready to pull that trigger. So when I say do a pre-order, I'm not saying link it now. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you link it in six months or a year or whenever it is when you're saying, and this thing is dropping in the next three months and the, when i say dropping mm -hmm. i mean they are 100 percent guaranteed go. it is it's a stone cold lock they cannot 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 afford to blow that date if Absolutely. they blow that date they might as well just slam their own <laughs> penis in, in, the in the a door. car door don't <laughs> no right. no right i got you I but agree. when it's a stone cold lock mm -hmm. they should absolutely do a pre pre-order pre-sale whatever okay. okay should they do it with uh an advanced now the the standard the industry standard on on how you do that is with an advanced weekend right. if you buy it like the game launches on monday but if you buy the pre-order then you get access on friday right. and that is just a a completely smart process because what you do then is you just break up the masses into two waves that just makes it a little bit mm -hmm. easier for you to manage yeah mm -hmm. so that's a that's a for sure yes and i get that some people don't like it but it just makes sense mm -hmm. from an industry standpoint of you are going to get people to break up into two big waves that are a little bit easier to deal with than one tsunami okay now as far as your pricing there mm -hmm. I would say it's not bad. Mm -hmm. I would though say make the standard edition mm -hmm. thirty nine ninety five, mm. and here's why. Here's mm. why. Mm. The Squadron forty two is 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 going to be it's crack, mm -hmm. and you give <laughs> the dealers give you that first one almost for free. It's a little you get. Oh, you want that first taste. The point is to get you get in. Yeah. on that on yeah. that little hamster wheel, yeah. and they're gonna make the big money off of you in Star Citizen. Okay, that's 
242 and and mm-hmm. i'm not saying that the game won't be worth 60 bucks mm-hmm. it absolutely will right, be the, in fact i in, believe though. it'll be worth 69.95 mm-hmm. but you give it to them at 39.95 so that everyone you just blanket the entire industry mm-hmm. from the nerds everybody to the market the, people price. to everybody saying what the hell these guys are crazy they're giving this shit away mm-hmm. they're giving it a half price this is stupid they're undercutting themselves mm-hmm. so that all the little nerds out there go oh shit this is a deal i'm gonna get that mm-hmm. and then they'll get you on the back end when you're spending 800 dollars for a ship but for this is how they get you in the deluxe edition 79.95 okay i like that with so the deluxe edition let's call that the um online deluxe edition okay so what that is is yeah. they're giving it to you with no extra anything from their end, mm-hmm. what you get is a soundtrack, mm-hmm. a digital, digital some stuff. digital artwork. Mm-hmm. You get some shit that they don't have to shell out nothing for. Mm-hmm. A collector's edition for a hundred bucks, I I I dig it. And I would say what you do is with that collector's edition, don't make the mistake of fallout where you say we're going to give you a bag the bag sucked yeah don't make the mistake of starfield where they say we're going to give you this watch for a couple hundred dollars the watch sucked Mm -hmm. people were complaining that the watch like if you take your regular apple watch Mm -hmm. or android watch Mm -hmm. and go get the free from the app store on Mm -hmm. apple or android get Mm -hmm. the free starfield app it, it had more functionality than their oh stupid God, watch. I didn't know that. Don't try to make oh, a watch wow. better than Apple or mm-hmm. Android. You're not going to do it. They spend billions of dollars. Don't try to make a bag better than whoever makes bags. Right. They're going to you, you, no. Don't don't do that. Yeah. Do the smart thing. The thing that that Final Fantasy always does. The mm-hmm. thing that Diablo does. The thing that people do where their their customers are happy is for that hundred dollar edition. You get a little model. Right, because that's what you can do better than Apple. Yeah. That's what you can do better. You don't have the competition of whatever. Right, it's your own. Come up with a F eight Lightning ship mm-hmm. or a this or a that something that looks sexy, something sex on a stick. Item for Give the them game. a little die cast mm-hmm. model yeah. that's six inches tall that they can put on their bookshelf with all their other nerd crap. Yep, and then you have a thing that you don't publicize very loudly right. you keep it super super low-key quiet it's only available to uh what do you call those that what are the whales called in this game uh uh oh, concierge you mean? concierge yeah. it's only available to concierge you do the imperator package mm. for a fucking four oh, excuse me for four hundred dollars mm-hmm. and it gets you some special ship or some specials whatever mm. and rake in the big money from the nerds but that one you announce quietly after the fact it's only available for concierge to even buy and that one you you don't announce it up front you let this the the standard pricing out there for a while Mm -hmm. and then you put out a special email to all the concierge idiots of hey look you want to upgrade for eight hundred dollars and you'll get this ship and you'll get this thing and you'll get this thing and if you already bought any of the other packages Mm -hmm. you can upgrade for zero dollars extra, you just kick this upgrade, and that ninety nine ninety five is deducted straight out of your eight hundred dollar pack, and that's where the whales are going to come in big. Mm, okay, all that's right. all. That's 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 the whole plan. Interesting. All right, bro. I appreciate you kicking it off. Thank you, man. All Hi, righty, all righty. Let's bring in pops in space. Pops, pops. Is he there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay. All right. Question number one, should there be a pre-order? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this real quick. No, you're okay. You're, no, you're okay. It's just almost okay. always after you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Early access. Only me. That's not going to happen. Okay. So no. Okay. Okay. So early access out of question. Cause then I'll, I'll tell you what, why, because they're going to, they're going to get in the game and they are going to make videos and we're going to know everything before we get a chance to <laughs> see anything or whatever other group that don't know everybody same time i don't care who you are okay okay uh your prices uh yeah i i like your prices pretty 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 good okay 
Uh, the only thing is, I w would would ask, how much did we pay for Squadron Forty Two? How much was Ooh, was it when we got it in the price, pack? Do you remember? That price has ranged because oh, in the early okay. days it was like super dirt cheap. I, I can't even yeah, remember what the original prices were for it. Maybe somebody in chat can put it in and tell us what we paid for it in the early days. Okay. But I honestly now, have completely forgotten what it was like fifteen mm -hmm. bucks or I can't even remember, yeah. Pops. Yeah, because I, I I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I, Kai and I on the same page. Okay. That, that you know make that 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 price that you just can't resist. You don't you don't care, mm -hmm. uh, and all that. The only thing is, um, the reason why I ask, maybe five dollars more than what we paid for it. That would make me feel better for pre-ordering <laughs> it way back then. But the um, let's see, the deluxe. What what would they come with? Yeah, oh, my know, I goodness. Mean, I mean, you know, in general, like Kai said, he gave, like, and I agree, you know, for Deluxe, it's 20 bucks more, but you get some type of virtual items. You know what I mean? Nothing yeah. nothing tangible, right? Yeah. Um, maybe. Certain maybe, pistol, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, but, you know. But paint, I don't know. What do you think? Ship paint. Paint. Ship okay. paint. Skin paint. Only yeah, paint skins. skins. You get, yeah, sk yeah, skins that only you get Just for that. Squadron 42 people. Mm -hmm. That yeah, would that cool. would that would be all right. Now the collector. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, I, okay, I tell you what, I would take. Okay. A pico, I would take a pico, <laughs> but now do I have to pay extra for? Because I've already pre-ordered. Maybe it goes into the price of my. Because I'm not paying ninety nine. Right, 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 right. Well, the I'm problem is you know, now you know that pico is like really big. That thing's a monster. <laughs> but I guess yeah, they could ship it. They could ship a, a pico. You know, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, but you take a real pico, okay? Yeah, Maybe. I'll give it to. I'll I'll sleep with it. Or I'll give it to one of my daughters or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no problem with that. Fair but enough. I just don't want to pay uh, okay. extra hundred bucks for it. I got you. Okay, thank so, you, Pops. All right, let me bring it almost over. Uh, let's see. Boom! There he is. Almost. You there? Yes, I am, sir. Hey, Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I. I think this the fifty nine ninety five price is just like a, a standard given like everybody with a triple A game charges at least that. Okay. So there's no getting away from that price. Okay. Um the deluxe price, unfortunately, Below? that actually fits like the price is that price, it perfectly fits with everyone else's okay. deluxe prices, right? So but I don't know what they could offer it. I know I know. I'm pretty sure, right? Because this is business 101. Mm -hmm. Just do the upsell and with the least amount of cost to you. Okay. So it would be something like some soundtracks or mm -hmm. some extra thing, something that something wouldn't digital. come out of their pocket. Yeah, something digital. You know? Yeah. Now the collector's editions. Mm -hmm. This is that's a little tricky it because <laughs> because some people do a range of, right. of prices and and I. Uh, this one kind of hurts me a little because mm -hmm. I could never, when I was younger, mm -hmm. could never afford the collector right. stuff, right? <laughs> but I always wanted it. Mm -hmm. So, like a World of Warcraft collector's edition stuff. The the what is that? Call of Duty. Like, like I remember they came with goggles one time, uh -huh. night vision goggles. And the, these collector's editions ran the gambit of definitely more than a hundred dollars. Right. They're usually like one ten, right? One fifty, one eighty. If you got like some crazy one where it's like night vision goggles plus some I don't know fake radio and it'd be like three fifty or something. Mm -hmm. So I th this is me putting my what I personally would like to see in there. Okay, I'd like to see a collector's edition for like one fifty plus. Okay, and it come with uh, like Kai said uh, a little model of something mm. and and but being conscientious of it can't be difficult like for mm. instance uh i i think for um i i said that uh that little model they had on the showroom floor of the uh the whole d mm -hmm. i was like that thing looks beautiful yeah but that's very intricate mm -hmm. imagine 3d printing that yeah so what's something simple that would make you feel good but doesn't it, it wouldn't make take a long time like the titan 
Yeah. So I wouldn't mind having like a little model of a Titan. Probably not worth how much the collectors think, but at least you get something physical. I miss that about uh, games giving you something very physical, a hard copy, posters. You know, I, I have nothing of Star Citizen on any of my walls. And, and like, I would really like to have like a, like a whole, what is that? Um, gosh, it's like a, like, not, I don't have a desk. I have like shelves. I have a bunch mm -hmm. of shelves attached to my walls mm -hmm. and I have little, uh, things and little plushies and stuff on them. I would like to have like a couple of ships on that shelf, you know? Okay. Would you take, a, would, you take would you take a ship? Would you take a small model of the F8? Would you take a Squadron 42 patch? And would you take, um, I'm trying to see what's like tied into that storyline. You know what I mean? Um, something out of that type of thing, like the whole military thing. Would you take something like that or no? Well, when I, when I said the Titan, I'm trying to think of what is really simplistic and wouldn't take a lot of time. True to make because time is money and the more detailed something is the more, the more is. yeah because you're gonna have to paint it and stuff like that mm -hmm. and to me the the very most simplest design in star citizen is titan even though it doesn't fit along um so but it's maybe the advocacy a choice. Ship, though it's, it's it's in the it's in there though okay yeah that could make it work but uh as far as like should there be a uh pre-order 100%. There's already pre-orders. Okay. Yeah, right. pre we pre-ordered we pre right? already, right? <laughs> Probably everybody in chat has a has a pre-order with the exception of me because I brain farted on it. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're down for the pre-order. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Let me bring in Fist to Face, then Togi. Fist, you there? Hey, what's Griff? You got all right. It. So keep it quick. Um, I agree with your prices. Uh, okay. Standard. You know, um, base game, maybe deluxe. Say, okay, all right, you get into, um, you know, PU. Now, you know, some people that. think that that deluxe price is actually low. Some people think it should be 99. What do you think? And then push uh, the collectors up. I, I think being that for the for, for first game, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, okay. that's, that's, that's kind of You don't of think they got enough stuff. steam to push push for that type yeah, of money? Yeah, okay. I, I don't know if you, you're kind of pushing it, you know, but I mean, you know what, what if, I mean? Let but, me um, ask you this. What if I told you that for $99, you'd get the next chapter of Squadron 42? Then there's a, then then there you go. That's that's DLCs. That's what they do already. That's, well, what, that's what Starfield did. did. Starfield did that. That's right. Yeah, Star, that's fine. That's that's I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that because like Icarus did that with the DLCs mm -hmm. and everything. So you know, um, Starfield, like you said, that's cool. Forty bucks you know, for you know, forty bucks get, more, you get the next game. There you go. Okay. You okay. know that's 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 a good deal. Let me, let me throw something at you about um, collectors. When I bought okay. uh, Elder Scrolls Online, I that was the I think that was the most expensive collectors I ever bought. I think I paid like one twenty one. I can't remember what it was, but it was over a hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. They gave me a 12, it was this big statue of the freaking dragon in ESO. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now I wish back in the day, cause I, I so jealous when I watch streamers and I look and I see their shelves behind them that actually bought yeah. all that type of stuff. And man, cause yeah. you know, back in the day, who'd have thought, you know what I mean? You're going to collect these things, mm -hmm. but they have become a thing. I got that one and I got the one for, um, what was EA's game? Battlefield one. I got one for that one too. Those are the only two yeah. I have, but they're big. I mean, the big, the freaking box is like this big, man. You know what I mean? Right. Do you think that CIG would produce something physical? Like, I don't know. They, what, what, well, what's, yeah. what's, what's, what's the young lady's name? Who's making the, the helmets now? Um, Mighty Heidi. Mighty, Mighty Heidi. Heidi. Yeah. yeah. You know, if it was 150 I, bucks, 200 bucks, would you buy the helmet? Well, first off, I'm gonna tell you something. It's gonna be more than that. Well, I'm just picking a number. I'm just, just picking a number. I'm, 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 I'm gonna throw it to you. It's gonna be like <laughs> for that helmet that she made. I'm just saying specifically, but. But I mean, they're, they're mass producing, yeah. so you know she's doing custom stuff. But mass produced helmet. Yeah. You know, mass produced helmet. Okay. How much would you I put? Mean, How I, much I, you put? I, I could see the three hundred dollar one, like, like, like they did with Holy the star. I got some deep pockets. <laughs> I I could see the three hundred. No, I mean okay. just being real. Okay. I'm just just I mean because what they sell, they sold the watch for that. 
right? Yeah, now, I, I agree with Kai what said, you know, as far as what they, they tried to do with the watch. <laughs> but at the same time, too, I mean, for them to mass produce a helmet or, I mean, for them to mass produce, I mean, you got JRDF, like Fast Car said. Yeah. You know, they could put they could put them to use um, making uh, definitely some packages out there. Well, Strikers with you. you. Strikers saying two ninety nine for a real helmet. Yeah, Easy for a real helmet. Yeah. Hell yeah, it's uh-huh. it's that's 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 real for a mass produced helmet. Uh-huh. You know, wow. You know, don't okay. you guys yeah. got, y'all got that big money, boy? I gotta come get some money from you guys. I, wait a minute, hold up for a second. <laughs> Who said I got the big money? I, I'm just telling you what it would realistically call. I say I would pay <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's two different statements there, girl. Hold on. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, we'll bring in Togi here. Togi, you there? I think he's there. You know, Griff, you put yourself in general. Did I? Oh, I went there. I sure did. Oh, my God. I went to the wrong channel. Thank you almost. <laughs> I brought I'll, the I'll wrong jump one up. up. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. There we go. All right, Togi. What up? You got it. All right. So first of all, should there be a uh, pre-order? There already is one. Gotcha. Um, Early access, there already is. So I don't think they can do that with Squadron without Mm. looking like idiots. Okay. All right. And then these prices, like, are too low. Okay. Any game that's asking $48,000 for a package is Mm. not afraid to ask for more money. (laughs) All right, so like if if seventy dollars is the new standard, that's really they're right. asking for seventy dollars, and, and that's at least that maybe a year from now. So we are seeing that their games are creeping up to that. They're at that sixty nine ninety five point now. So you're saying yeah. definitely, it yeah, it's, there. Okay. I think it's going to be ninety for a deluxe. It's going to come with some little mm. digital items. Mm. I think your collectors is way off. Okay, but you I see them doing something like what Kingdom Come Deliverance did. What they do. Uh, they had a four hundred and fifty dollar collector's edition that came with a sword, like Ooh. a literal sword made in the Czech Republic by a blacksmith. The thing looked awesome. Wow. I super regret not getting one of those. Wow, that's a I could see them doing something. I'm mean, again, mm-hmm. like this is Star Citizen. Mm-hmm. They know they're gonna sell them. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, like I mean, if you can, if you can sell out of virtual ships. out of yeah, out of virtual uh, three thousand dollar virtual ships in literal seconds. <laughs> That's true. All right, That's true. You know they can take a, I mean, literally anything. The sky is the limit. Yeah, it could be a thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, Saint Nito, Nieto, thank you for the raid of nine. Jay Cross for you. Thank you so much for the raid of 148. Thank you so much, Raiders. I hope both of you all had great streams today and that you're having a great holiday weekend. Welcome, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you guys for being here. We are uh, discussing <laughs> should Squadron 42 be a pre order? And I've got uh, my good friend Togi in here uh, telling me my numbers are way off. <laughs> and he's probably right because he's bringing some interesting perspectives. So let me ask you a question yeah. about this sword. This was actually, was it limited edition? Like only, obviously, because of something yeah. to make it. Yeah, so it was limited because they did the Kickstarter too. It was limited during the Kickstarter. I don't remember how many they sold. Mm. I, I think it was a, maybe one or 200. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. But they still sold out real quick. Well, I bet. I bet. I mean, not to be funny, but I know when, um, when um, uh, Starfield came out, and I went right away to go check and see, uh, you know, the just out of curiosity, the three hundred dollar package. They were gone. Amazon gone. Yep. GameStop gone. I'm, you got to be kidding me! They flew out the window like that, you know. And to your yeah, point, my, uh, you have a community my, who is willing to spend money. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, and that's something I think that they're going to lean into. I mean, because again, they've already sold a lot of physical items with the base packages. Yeah. With like the game on the flash drive and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, doing like a big order of 3D printed arc light pistols. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. You know, and I mean, they could charge three, three fifty to be here. if they were a high enough quality. I mean, hell, the I've got the the collector's edition for Fallout seventy six. Uh-huh. Is that the helmet? Right. Was it the helmet? Or the and I'm very happy to be yeah, here. it was the helmet, okay. and that was like three hundred bucks. And that thing's super chintzy. 
<laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 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 not good. <laughs> you know, and I think that here. given Star Citizen's audience, yeah. if you could offer something that was really nice, mm -hmm. name the price. People would pay. You're right, they'd pay it, especially. And I hate to say this, but when you put down limited, and it really is limited, like only a thousand or five thousand, whatever they are, that just pushes yeah. them out the door even more. You know. Yeah, it um, would be gone in seconds. Yeah, yeah, boy, oh boy. Oh, there's something else to think about now. Okay, I'm almost scared that I asked this question at this point. But okay, I, I gotta agree with you guys on the collectors thing. I mean, I was trying to keep it modest because I guess I was trying to a little bit worried about the impression of money grabbing but you guys are telling me this is industry standard stuff it's not a money grab it's this is what people are willing to pay for these yeah, and i mean it, it could be the kind of thing where they have a collectors and a premium that's true yeah they could have four because i think you know, that's Starfield what um, four categories you're right because they had one that was what, a steel box and then it went to the one with the watch you're right i forgot about that yeah armored core six i got the collector's edition because i bought it so quick i didn't even know about the premium edition Wow. And the collectors was two fifty, and they wanted four fifty for the uh, for the premium. Wow! And that just came with a like mech action figure, and then the premium had a garage for it. Mm. And they wanted another two hundred bucks for that, and it still sold out like nothing. <laughs> okay, boy, oh boy, Togi just made me realize I got to put some money to the side for this game. All right, Togi, thank you for so much for the input. Yep. Oh, my God. Okay, gang. Um, interesting. My numbers evidently are super low. I mean, I, you know, on one side, I agree with Kai. If they go for the low number, because originally I think it was supposed to be like 39 or 49 bucks. That's all it was supposed to be. I raised it for inflation. Um, but if, if it's low like that, they're going to get a zillion people to buy it. I agree 100%. A zillion people will snatch it up at that price. Um, they also don't have to worry about the backers because we can't complain because we paid for way less than that for it. So not a big deal. Um, if they decide to go to the number I put up originally, $59, obviously that's still reasonable. A year from now, there still will be games at that price point. Um, but admittedly, that price point for base for games is going up now. It is going up to $69.95 and people evidently have no problem. I didn't hear anybody balking about it when some of these new games came out at $69.95. People were willing to pay that price. Um, so I think we're in that range, um, 39 to, six, to 69, uh, the deluxe number, I said 79, which I thought was like, again, I was trying to be modest, but, um, 99 bucks for a deluxe, particularly if something like the next chapter is included in it. Uh, yeah, people probably will pay a hundred bucks if they know they're going to get the DLC or, and I'm not even sure if it's a DLC. I think it's actually going to be another game. Maybe it will be a DLC. But I'm sure for 40 more dollars that people want to get in ahead of time, people will pay it, especially if the game, if they hear the game is good. If they hear the game is, if it gets a great rating, people will want to get in on that next chapter at a slightly lower price. So I would agree with that. Now, the collector's point, like everybody said, that can range. Um, I agree. When you guys say add a fourth category, uh, you know, maybe there's a platinum edition and then there's a collector's I'm edition. I'm very happy to um, be here. I would agree with that. 99 bucks gives you that one, the platinum with, uh, or, or whatever. Uh, no, it's got to go higher than that. 120, 100, 120. I don't know. Maybe you get a steel box. There are some physical items that CIG was supposed to be giving out. So maybe that stuff that was put in, in the original date, well, some of that might be included in there. Uh, and then if they decided to go a collectors, a real collectors limited edition, something that goes from 150 to 300. God, Togi said 450 bucks. Jesus. I, I couldn't do it, but there, I know there would be people who would buy it, especially if they say there's only a thousand of them, you know, or 10,000 of them or 5,000 of them, people would drop that money for it. It's kind of amazing to think about it, but people will do it. <laughs> uh, who is that? Uriah, Uriah says 142 needs to be $200 at launch. Oh my God, Uriah. Uh, people would flip. I don't think we're going to be able to get away with that. Okay. Well, anyway, those were all great. You guys gave some really cool points here for us to consider um, and for us to think about, but that, that $450, Togi, I don't know. That sword sounds cool, but I don't know if I could do it. Uh, um, anyway, let's go ahead and um, get ready for the last second half of our show. Um, this is our last Soul Voices for the end of the year, uh, and we've got a little special treat for you. 
player haters are going to come on and share with you guys some thoughts uh, about this year and next year. So I want you guys to hang tight, hold tight for a few minutes with us until we come back. There might be a slight delay because <laughs> I wasn't completely ready for this, but I know my player haters are ready uh, here. So we're going to show you guys a commercial and then hopefully we'll be, <laughs> we'll be back with the player haters. So uh, just stand by for a minute. We'll be, we'll be right back. Uh, let's see. I got to remember where everything is now because I don't think I had it ready. Here we go. Soul Citizens, the network that has brought you compelling programs about citizens, backers, refunders, white knights, pirates, salty space dogs, whales, dolphins, care bears, griefers, and grifters. Now, the Soul Citizens Network gives you another side of the story as we go into the world of the haters. The Soul Citizens present the Playa Haters. I heard my theme music. What up? What, my up what up? What up? Heard my music. What up? What up? <laughs> you know what? I had to change See the what camera today. I could not push the right buttons for nothing today. <laughs> How are I you? I saw behind the curtain. How are you, man? I know you did. Everybody saw behind the curtain, but they just gonna have to see it today, my brother. How you doing? Uh, G Love. How do, you doing, brother? You doing all right, man? I'm doing all right. You looking mighty fly, rather dapper today. You got your holiday purple on. Even oh, of holiday, course. Holiday you know this my color, right? Well, the holiday colors are red and green, though, brother. You got, I think you're on the wrong holiday. You're on Prince's birthday or something. I don't know what's Luminalia. going on. Luminalia. Okay, you're doing your Luminalia colors. All right, all right, all right. Well, listen, man, I'm happy that you made it. I didn't think we was going to be able to do the player haters today, but I saw your beautiful face light up the screen. I said, oh, my brother is here. My brother is here. Of course. All right. And you saw I was, I, you saw my, my, my cousin DK, he was watching and he was uh, saying there was like 20 people and then they heard the player haters coming on. Oh, Boom, they got a raid. That's it. That's it. All right. Ain't nothing wrong with that, my brother. Listen, we need to go ahead and jump into this because I got some questions for you for this year. Are you ready for the questions for this year? Oh, I, I think I'm ready. You think you're ready? All right. So here we go, my brother. Let me, let me get this set up here. Let me see. Hold on a second. You know what? I got to change this configuration on this thing, man, because this ain't working for me. That's why my screen didn't come up. I had to prep the show. All right. There we go. That looks much better. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So I got three questions for you, my brother. Three questions for you. Mind you, if y'all want to come in and give us your thoughts, you can do this as well. Don't forget to click on the link. You can come in and talk to my boy, Lock G. Talk to me, G Lock. Give us your thoughts as well. Just don't come in here acting a fool. That's all I got to say. All right. You ready, you know my brother? What happens? All right. Here we go. This came from last week on Soul Citizens. These three questions. I want to run these questions past you. All right. Number one. Number one. What was the worst thing in 2023 in Star Citizen? The worst thing. Best to show paint on a Corsair. Who in the hell thought that best in show paint on a Corsair was gonna look fine? No. Uh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This ain't happening. Wait a minute. That Corsair was purple just like your hat. What was wrong with that color? Wrong ship. <laughs> All right, wrong ship. Okay, I got you. Um, let me see. The worst, the worst thing of 2023 about Star Citizen. I know what it was. It was Idris K's hair. That's what it was. Idris K's hair. That's Idris what, K that was is a 30K and just by naming him. That was the worst thing in 2023. All right. So let's see. Does anybody in chat want to come and tell us what the worst thing was in 2023? I think they might be scared, man. I might. I, I think we might I think have scared, scared them all. I don't think anybody want to challenge this. Yeah, nobody wants to come out with one worse than what we got. All right. Well, I tell you what. Nobody's coming in for the worst. Let's see if we can come up with the best. All right. What was the best thing about Star Citizen in 2023? The best thing. Got the best one here. It's the best in show paint for the 600i. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. The 600i got Oh, that's Oh, that's what it was. You was hating because the 600i got the same color as the as the as the Drake Corsair. That's what that's why you didn't like the Corsair. But see, that's the right ship, it. right? <laughs> oh, okay. So that's the right ship. Okay. All right. I got you. 
the 600 I, okay all right let me think what was the best thing in 2023 let me think let me think let me think i'm gonna say the best thing in 2023 was seeing a grown man cry. Did you see that Chris Roberts on that stage, man? I almost had to hand that brother a handkerchief. He was crying. He was all happy and stuff because he finally got his server message. And you know what? He was, I, you know, brought a tear to my eye. In fact, you know, players don't cry that often, but he almost got me to cry too. This player almost cried. Did you cry, player? Did you cry with Chris Roberts? I might have shed a tear, but I poured a little out for him. <laughs> you, 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 you gave him a you give him a little drop. Is that what you did? You give him a little drop. Or a little laugh. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, looks like we got a player that came into the comment area here. We're going to bring in that player, FC. He's here with us. Fast card. What's up, player? Oh, that player ain't got no microphone. Can you believe that? How come a player? Oh, yeah. Now we can go ahead and do my good pawn shop. <laughs> hey, so uh, this is our back. The worst of 2023 is the lack of play. Uh, more player haters. We, how many? How many did this year? Well, we, uh, well, let's see. You know what? I hate to say it. The player haters have not been on, according to my records. The player haters have not been on since July. So it's been six months. Right. It's six months already. It, it didn't what? feel like it. But I went back and I was trying to prep, and I said, "Oh my God, the last show was July." So the player haters went on summer vacation and fall vacation, and and it almost winter vacation. vacation. No, come back for Christmas. So you had Christmas in July, and have Christmas in December. So that's what happened. Is that what happened? Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. That's well, happened. So yeah, if the worst of twenty twenty three, the the last player haters and and on talk. We we met you guys. Okay. Well, we appreciate that. Now, you know, Thank for, you, yeah. We, for, we keep that one. Listen, for a second, mm -hmm. he almost got a 30K. I thought he was saying that the worst of 2023 was the player haters coming the on. player haters, because right. That's what I, was I, was about about say. I was about to say. I was about to say, oh, brother, you was about to, you was about you to get a big 30K. one. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. So he was all right. <laughs> we was going to kick him out of here. All right, FC, we appreciate that. Uh, all right. the, the best of 2023. Yes. It's it, it got to be... Uh, uh, it, it, it just can't have. You say you say it was the worst. I say it was bad. Oh. It had me falling. This, this man just about getting himself thirty k yeah, off he, the general principle. Yeah, I know he <laughs> robotting and plus he robotting up in here on top of it. Okay, so you liked interest K's hair. All right, you we'll, said something we'll, nice about it. Oh, was yeah. funny as hell. Well, <laughs> could uh, you imagine all the grease stains he, he, he leaves whenever he gets up from the couch? I didn't have to imagine it. I looked at it every week when he was on the show. But anyway, man, what is your wish? Well, we haven't got to, did we get to your wish? No, not yet. We ain't got to wish. Uh, we'll go and sit you here. What is your wish for 2024 for Star Citizen? No wishes. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> oh, you wish that we would be on more. Okay. All right. We'll see. That's if a we, good wish. We'll see if we can make That's that wish. wish come true. All right. That's right. Yeah. Players make wishes come true. That was a blessing. Just all right. All yeah. Right. Happy holidays. All right. Same to you, Fast Card. All right. We got a player here. Let's see. We got, I think, Fist to Face was the next one in. Uh, Fist to Face. What's going on? Doing? What's going on? What's going on? What's up, player? All right. All right. All right. So, what, hey, you, listen, what is your, um, your worst of 2023? Ooh. I would have to say 318. 318 was your worst of 2023. I'll buy that for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. 2018. I would say 318. 318. All right. Who and then you? putting out that advertisement video. And the advertisement oh, 318 video. Is playable now. Okay. Okay. All right. What about <laughs> the best of 2023? The best of 2023 for me was Citizen Con. Citizen Con. Citizen Con. What was so good about it? Oh, man, I, I, I got to get meet to go. all of those. Griff went. I, got, I couldn't go. So it was so good about Yeah, it. he went. So, I, hey, man, it was great to meet Griff. It was great to meet all of the Soul Citizens and all the other peoples from the community. Man, it was just a blast. Well, you know, players like Lockji and me, we couldn't go because we had to make our money. Yeah, there you were no players I mean? there, so, so there was no Citizen Con. That's right. It didn't exist. Oh, no Citizen man, Con without I'm the players, so brother. so sorry for y'all. That's right. Listen, y'all should have... I should have pawned that jewelry I had on. Y'all could have caught oh, no, that no, flight. We don't pawn this. This is unpawnable. Unpawnable. <laughs> unpawnable. That's a new okay. word for you to learn. Unpawnable. And what, <laughs> All and what, right. And what's your wish for 2024? 
And don't include not getting 30 k on this show. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, you know what? I'm going to have to agree with Fast Cars. I, I do enjoy you guys' presence, you know. You guys, uh, I would like to see more of you because you know why you encourage me what to, to um not to be. Okay, you know what, Lockie? Okay. The all right. The brother said I, I'll that take he, that. The, the brother said he likes our presence. Well, here's a present for you right you here, brother. You got 30K. Get out of here real quick. Happy holidays. Just, ho just give it out. Happy holiday to you and yours, if you know what I mean. All right, let's see who's up next. We got uh, Kai Zen. The special K is coming in. Kai Zen. What's up, my brother? All right. There I'm not is. even going to joke with it. I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> the low point for me was selling the F8 Lightning. Okay. After they said they weren't. Okay. Uh, it put me in a really bad place of not trusting them development wise. And then the high point came right after that with Citizen Con, which did a lot to redeem my faith in the project. We'll see how it plays out. But my wish for 2024 is that. Chris Roberts said we're going to see all of that stuff in the next year, most likely. That's what they're aiming for. No promises, but that's what the goal is. Mm -hmm. My wish for 2024 is that more than half of the amazing stuff they showed us at SitCon comes out in 2024 and the other half comes out in 2025. If that happens, it will be the best single year for game development on a project that I can think of. Wow. You know what? You, oh. You know what, Lock G? Mm. For that prediction, let's give him the dance. Let's hit him. All right, Kai. Well, yeah. all right. Star all right, Kai. I this like that. The universe. All right. Angel. That boy, Kai. We have returned to claim the fear. That brother know what he's talking about. All right, let's bring in the next one here, Mr. Togi. Togi, Togi. What up? Right, you got it. You got it. What you got for us? What was the worst of 2023? worst the worst was that not one not two not three but four flying trash cans came out in the form of the trade cutter and the Poolin. <laughs> I, I like what you i like where you're going with this all right and you know what the best of 2023 was <laughs> Uh -huh. Every time, every time one of those got blown up, that was the best part of 2023. And my hope for 2024 is that the rest of them get blown up. <laughs> that is what I'm hoping for. All right, <laughs> Togi, we appreciate Thank you, you brother. coming in with Amen, your brother. predictions of destruction. We truly appreciate that. All right, let me, let me bring in uh, Almost Over. I'm not even sure who was next. Almost, are you there? I yeah, there. there he is. All right, what's up, almost? All right, so I have to say it because my friends took away my video game recommendations. Okay, uh, privileges. The worst of 2023 was 318 for me. 318, 318, <laughs> 318 was the worst. All right, again? all right, yeah. well, that's two for 318. Okay, what's the best for 2023? Uh, this is gonna, this is this is gonna be a in the know type thing. Uh, Weevil eggs. Oh boy, somebody trying to make some money. Somebody trying to make I'm some a, profit. Hey, like I'm addicted to hunting you know, for he's those. He's all about the money. He's all about the cash. No, no, the no cash. I give she the cash away. Up? I just like the find, the, the the thrill of the find. You like the thrill of the find. Okay. Yeah. Find more weevil eggs. So you to get the gold chain. Just like, like this the money. You just like stumbling <laughs> across some eggs. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like I just like coming across it and just like that thrill of like, oh my gosh, I found weevil eggs. And then I'll just give away the money. I don't care about the money. Oh, lock G. You gonna get 30K. Lock oh, God. Oh, give away the cash. God, the brother don't want to keep the money. He gotta go. Got it's to all go. about the money, don't Got you know? To go. Pops in space. We had to kick that one out. What's up, Pops? Oh, all right, all I know, right. I know, Pop, with a name like Pops in Space, I know you about that money. What's up, Pops? He's playing. Okay, my worst was Alien Week. It was nothing. Alien it was week. purely nothing. Alien <laughs> they Week. Did. No new ship. Alien no Week. Nothing. No new ship. No new nothing. Oh, not even a it Weevil was... egg. No, nothing. Wow. Nothing at all. Who was it the was... best of 2023? Best of 2023? Was I found out what a building is, and Fast Cart knows what I'm talking about. Well, Citizen Con. You found out what Citizen Con was a building. I don't know what that means. No, answer the the 
Fast Cart knows what I mean about a building. Well, Fast it Cart, was, it, wait a minute. Do you see Fast Cart here? The Lock G. It's all right. Lock G. Fast Cart, Fast Cart. Do you see Fast Cart here? Get the table. <laughs> you got 30K. I right, come in talking about some Fast Cart. You must be kidding me, man. FC. Fast car, fast drive his car. way on out. out. He just totally disrespected <laughs> us. But I know what fast car know what I'm talking about. Ain't that a trip? All right. Well, listen. We appreciate you guys dropping in and giving us your thoughts on the worst and the best of 2023. But I didn't get to my brother here. What is your wish for 2024, Lachi? Okay, I got this. So my wish for 2024 is a suit with the same colors. It's a best in show skin on my 600i. Uh, I gotta uh, coordinate. Uh, 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 no way. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do that. This ain't this ain't got nothing to do with the purple rain. Hook me up with a suit. I don't think that's gonna, I don't think purple, that's gonna happen. You know? I don't think that's gonna happen, my brother. All right, we gonna wrap this thing up because it, it, we are, we are over time, especially. And I'm over that suit, which you got on now. You do need a new suit. I agree with you 100%. Time for listen, a new suit. Uh, listen, we want to tell these folks what's going on. We know that today is Pod Sat Saturday. Uh, we want to let you all know that today you can uh, join some of our friends, Mr. Paul Shelley, and also the gentleman over at Relay at 9 p.m. Eastern. But Paul Shelley is on at 6 p.m. Eastern. Come in for his show. Spend some time with him at the captain's table. Let him know that you came over from the Soul Citizens. Uh, yeah. That's, the, that, that's for today. Y'all can enjoy y'all holiday star citizen information. Now, tomorrow, Soul Citizens will be on vacation. In fact, we will be on vacation until January the 7th. We're going to be taking a couple of weeks off along with the folks at CIG. Maybe we'll go down there and hang out with them. I don't know, but we're taking a break. So we will not be here Thursdays. We will not be here Saturdays. We will not be here Sundays until January the 7th. So you guys take advantage I, we know that you're gonna miss us especially us right lock g they're gonna, that's miss, why they gonna miss the players that's who they really players. miss yeah they already mm -hmm. said the players need to come right. back more. They said it. maybe it's gonna be more was it players more in 2024 what do you think how's players that, more in 2024 that, we need a hashtag <laughs> hashtag yeah, we need a we need a hashtag all right i agree with you there um we also need somebody to raid uh i don't know if, if fc is over there I don't see him. He's in total nobody who we could raid. Oh, he said the Astro Pub is live. Look, our brother, the Astro Pub is right. live. Well, we're going to go ahead and send you guys over to Mr. Paul Shelley, the Astro P U B Pub. All right. We want to say thank you to everybody who hung out with us today. Thank you for the raids that we got earlier. Thank you for those of you who followed us. Really appreciate you. We want you guys to have a great holiday weekend. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. God bless all of you. Thank you for the support for 2023. And as always, peace, love, and soul. We'll see you guys next year. Ciao. All right.